Now this is a subject with which not every camera person, director of photography is fully acquainted. I call it infinity lighting. What does that mean? Basically, it's the illusion of natural light, light coming from a very far distance. And how do we deal with that? Basic facts are that, not easy to understand, the light does not come from the lighting instrument. Well, where else should it come from? Yeah. I put the lamp in there myself. So, in fact, the light comes from another place that we call a virtual light source, which is way behind the lighting instrument. And we can prove that. It's not so easy. But everybody who's ever been to a film school or media school or photographic school has heard about the square law. Yeah, that's unescapable. But the square law is physics and therefore you cannot escape it. But seemingly we do just that. And how do we prove that? Here we set up the light and the studio is too small to show the whole length of it, which would be 20 meters or 60 feet. So we put marks at five meters, at 10 meters, and another one at 20 meters. Here we have to cheat a little bit because the studio is not big enough. So five meter and 10 meter we can do. And when we make measurements, from the light to the five meter point, we arrive at about 100,000 lux. When we double that distance, we should have a quarter of that. Double the distance, quarter of the light. Law of physics. But we arrive at about 45, 48,000 lux. Two times more than we would expect by what we've learned in school. So the reason is that we don't put physics aside completely, but they relate to the virtual light source, which is 60 feet, 20 meters behind that light. From that point, way back there, outside the studio, that's where the square law operates and works, even here. So we are accustomed to looking at the lighting instrument and we know about the square law. But here, by placing it at a much bigger distance, even from outside the studio, we can create the illusion of a light that's much further away. And that helps us to create the effect of natural light, of sunlight. And that also, of course, helps us when our talents move. We don't get overexposed when we come closer. That easily, yeah? It's a great help forward. And now, in this case, because the studio is no bigger, we put it to a reflector. The beam of light that we create from this instrument is bigger than the reflector. So, obviously, we lose some light that goes on all sides of the reflector. And that's why, at 20 meter distance through the reflector, we don't quite arrive again at about half. We have a little less because we've lost some on the way. If we are going to set this up 
unhindered to go 5 meter, 10 meter, 20 meters, we would see that the square law doesn't hold true. So sometimes we measure 112,000 lux, and then at double the distance, we have 68,000. Well, we would expect to have 27,000. And this is a new understanding of how we can integrate that. How does it help us? Sometimes we would set up the light outside a building, pointing it straight up into a reflector, let the reflector shine it back into the room. And thus, we create the illusion of a light that is much, much further away, somewhere there, high enough where no crane could ever reach. And the beauty of it is, if our talent now moves closer to the window, he doesn't get overexposed in the way he would get exposed if the light would be right behind that window. Yeah. Very often when we shoot window sequences, we put a butterfly outside the window and we shine a 6K at the butterfly. It's quite common practice. But somehow it doesn't give the feeling of natural light because we lose the feeling that we have with the rays of light, like we would have from sunlight. Yes, we have light coming from the window, but not the right light. And that's what we can try and do here. also have special optics that we can add to all of our focusing lights. Believe it or not, 50 different focusing lights. Each of those we can equip with a parallel beam optical attachment. But again, we have a nearly parallel beam, but in that case it doesn't work as well. We have an indication of that kind of light, but not the same feeling that we can create here. So what's the use of something like this? For example, in the most modern studios, sometimes we have virtual studios, but we have a huge LED screen. The cheap one is 100,000, a slightly more expensive one costs a million, why do we do this? Because it allows us to bring nature into the studio. Today, we shoot the Sahara Desert. Tomorrow, we shoot the beach of Rio. And if we light that with traditional lighting, be it 2Ks or powerful LED lights, it looks like it's 2Ks or powerful LED lights it doesn't give the feeling of light from infinity, from endless distance, sunlight. So this way we can create this illusion. And this can be enhanced by using the reflected light system. In this case, we had to place the reflector too far away and some light gets lost. But when we re-reflect it, we see that we have a beautiful smooth light and we elongate the travel of the light, adding to the effect of infinity lighting, which is the dream that the original filmmakers were able to create when they said, we use the natural sun. 
They had studios with whole big glass cover so the actual sun could come in there. That was natural light. That was infinity lighting. But all the lighting instruments that hang in the studio right above your head can't do this. So this is one way. Now, this instrument is extremely effective. It consumes only 1.2 kilowatt. That means you can fire it up from grandmother's kitchen outlet. But the output is amazing. At 60 feet distance, 20 meter distance, the intensity of that light is more, 50% more than a 9K HMI light in its narrower spot position. Some people would call it ecology. Some people would call it green tech. For some people, it would be a miracle. That's why they say, can't I have a stronger light? Because I'm a professional, I need more than 1.2K. Well, if you see the relationship, you may be happy with it. But for those who always need more, because size matters, at least for testosterone-driven men, and many of those are still active in our business, we now have a 2.5K version of this light. Yeah? That gives you not 100,000 lux at 5 meters, but 200,000. Okay? Want more? Same size, same weight, double the light. We also can do that. But then we can also go the other way. When we have a small team, and we have, don't have the big diesel generators, and we don't have the big trucks, but we have a measly little 400 watt data light, which is a brilliant light. Yeah, I'm not bragging I don't have a big EO trip, but it is a brilliant light. It has a focus range of 1 to 20, which is many times more than any other light has ever achieved. That's why it was recognized by this Oscar Committee of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences and so on. So when we go to spot position, we have a four degree exit angle. Now we add the magic extra optics to it this big cooking pot that we attach to the front. And now we have, again, four degree. So why should we pay money for something like this? We have four degree and then we have four degree, but we have 500% more light. And the professional will now say, how many what does it have now? It doesn't consume for a penny more electricity, it just dishes out an additional 500% of light. And that's what we do with all of our parallel beam attachments. We multiply the light output three times, four times, five times, eight times. And that allows us to have a further reach, nearly parallel, but infinity lighting the way that you now have the virtual light source way, way outside the studio is not true anymore, only to a very small extent. But we can play another trick. Since this is all part of data light light stream, the world of reflected light, we can now take a whole row, maybe five reflectors, identical reflectors, Line them up all parallel and light them with this beam of light. Not so easy because the first reflector will be closer to the light, the last reflector will be further from the light. Yeah, so I have to do a little unfair trick. Yeah, like when you bake a birthday cake, you try to be honest and everybody gets the same slice. In this case, you're dishonest. You give the first reflector in this row a smaller slice of light. Cover a smaller area of the reflector to become active. 
and on the last in the row, you give the biggest slice, so that they all receive the same amount of light. And now, since they're all placed at the same angle, they create parallel beams. One, two, three, four, five, as many as you like. It takes a little while to set it up when you want the beams all to go same intensity. But again, you create the illusion of infinity lighting. Because sunlight, natural light, is light that comes parallel. And again, we've created the illusion. That's the heart and the base of a passionate image creator. Yeah? That you make people believe something that there isn't really. But it works that way, and the effect is like that. And that's the way we transfer and convey messages by creating fairy tales and illusions all the way through. In many different methods, in many different languages, in many different expressions, but this is one. And since light is not the only key for creating illusions, but I dare to say, even with those wonderful cameras now that are so incredibly sensitive that you can go to the darkest tunnel and still get good images. Even then, without light, there's nothing. But at the same time, we must not forget the big brother of light, the mighty brother of light, the shadow. Because that too has the capability of telling stories, messages of many different kinds. Sometimes they're stronger than what you can create with light. But if you want to be the master of shadows, if you want to ride the shadow, you need to control it. And in order to do that, you have to control the light. And that's what we're dedicated on doing. Control of the light. Precision lighting instruments. That's what we call our tools. Thank you.